Here's Brandon Pajimski driving, then kicking it out to Draymond Green. Now, as expected, John Collins backed off and dared him to shoot. But don't look at Draymond, look at Steph Curry instead. I mean, he already turns the other way around, cause he knows that Dre is gonna splash this one home. Draymond was super happy he made that shot, and he even posted on Instagram saying, Mama, I made it. 30 turned around. See, against the Jazz, Draymond shot 60% from three and 64.3% from the field to end up with 23 points. Like, we're pretty much aware that Draymond's backpack shooting form has been turned into a meme multiple times already. But right now, I think people can't make fun of it anymore. Cause if you take a look at Draymond's three point percentage in the last five games, the man has been shooting the lights out with 46.7%. And for the season, he's as efficient as Steph from three and actually way better than Clay with 42.1%. Collins shooting at a 34% clip from downtown. Draymond with an offensive rebound. That's the one thing you just cannot do. Draymond Green left wide open. Draymond. Most players would usually sag off when they see Draymond wide open from three. But if he's hitting his shots at this rate, Draymond is going to be a big problem, no mistake about it. Because aside from being a fantastic facilitator, he's now transforming into a real scoring threat from the outside, which gives opposing teams another body to worry about in their scouting report. Anyway, although Draymond shoots better than Clay from range, partly because the latter is having a hard time finding his groove this season, it seems that the wind is starting to shift in Clay's favor recently, because just like Dre, the other half of the Splash Brothers had a big game against the Jazz. I mean, here's Clay passing it out on the attack, then relocating afterwards like Steph before knocking down the tough corner three with Markinen all over his grill. Here, Collins closes out on him, sensing that he's getting hot. Clay then just gives up a pump fake and then drives inside for the easy and one finish with the left. And how about this? Pods gave him a flare screen off of the split action, then the flyby before drilling another contested bucket. Whether it's about jacking up shots from beyond the arc, mid range, and inside the shaded lane, the Jazz had no answer for Clay, and even though he came off the bench in this game, which was the first time since his rookie season back in 2012, he dropped a season high of 35 points on 59.1% shooting from the field and 53.8% from downtown to let the world know that he ain't done just yet. And if you take a closer look at his performance in the last five games, it seems that Clay is starting to pick up the slack as he's becoming more efficient as the games go by. With Draymond shooting like Steph and Clay seemingly returning to his old all-star form, the Golden State Warriors just put the league on notice, and based on the way they're trending as of late, it looks like the dubs are gonna have a big comeback. I mean, we've seen this movie before. Back in their last championship run, the Warriors dropped 16 games in back-to-back -back months leading to the playoffs thanks to a slew of injuries. The Dubs eventually finished third in the West, but around that point nobody believed that they could go all the way. And so they just stuck with what they had, battled through adversity, and as they say, the rest was championship history. The Warriors are no stranger to climbing out of holes, in which they themselves duck, and I think they're actually loving and thriving when they're in this kind of situation. See, time and time and time again, the people from the media and casual NBA fans have counted out the Warriors, but every time they do that, it just adds extra motivation for the dubs to prove their haters wrong. Now, although the dub situation is a bit tougher right now, as they're currently on the outside looking in, in terms of the play-in tournament and actual playoffs itself, I still believe that the Warriors can climb the ranks and make a deep run in the postseason with the pieces they have right now. I mean, even though Andrew Wiggins has clearly shown signs of regression this season, that mishap actually allowed Jonathan Kuminga to step into the spotlight and take on his role. 
And if you think of it further, JK is actually far better than Wiggins, cause he's not only much younger and athletic, but he's also more talented and has a higher ceiling than Wiggs. See, in the 26 games that he's started for the dubs this season, Kaminga averaged 16.8 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 2.8 assists, and in the last 10 games, he's actually averaging almost 20 a ball game, 5.5 rebounds, and 3.3 assists, while having efficient shooting splits from the field and range. In other words, the time of Kaminga being leashed on the bench is finally over, and now he's getting unleashed and more than ready to take over. I mean, look at this. Steph finds JK here on this sneaky play, and even though he has little space to work around, JK pounds his way inside and muscles it up against three black shirts. He had 14 in their win against the Jazz to show that he's ready to take the big leap. But it was against the Suns where JK had his official coming out party. See, here's JK running on the break. After receiving the ball, just take a look at what he did here against KD. The incredible efficiency. Oh, Kaminga! <laughs> nice move! Ever since he let out his frustration on Steve Kerr about his minutes, I've begun to notice that JK has become more aggressive as well as assertive on the offensive end. Like in this play, instead of taking a fadeaway, JK just bullies Royce O'Neal here on the low block until he gets an N1 opportunity. And in this semi-transition attack, he just goes through Durant with the left without any hesitation. Anyway, just like the 2021 version of Wiggins, the 2021 version of Jordan Poole also played an important role in their championship run that year. But even though they traded him to the Wizards, I think the Dubs found a young guy that could fill his role and perhaps even surpass the things that JP3 brought into the table. Cause the player that I'm talking about is none other than Brandon Pajemski. I mean, though he's just a rookie, Pods is not your ordinary rookie. In the last 10 games, Pods has been averaging 33.3 minutes a game while stuffing the stat sheet with 12.6 points, 7.2 rebounds, 6.3 assists on 46.7% shooting from the field, and 37.1% from downtown. Him playing beyond 30 minutes is no coincidence, especially with Kerr's history of benching younger players like what Kaminga and Moody experienced in their first two seasons in the league. This only means that Pods has earned the trust of Steve Kerr, which is why he's playing significant minutes and even finishing most games down the stretch. Just like Draymond, Pods is a high IQ player who can make the right decisions on the fly. Whether it's about setting up his teammates or creating shots on his own, he also does have a blue collar mentality in terms of grinding it out on defense, and he also loves to do the dirty work, like hustling and grabbing loose balls. So this is basically the real reason as to why he's seeing a lot of floor action despite being a legit rookie. Anyway, with Clay slowly getting his rhythm back, while Draymond is shooting at an all-time high from range, plus the fact that the young guns like Kaminga and Pajimski are maturing fast and currently playing at a high level, this makes the dubs a scary team to deal with with all of them clicking at the same time. And what's even scarier is that we haven't included Mr. Number 30 in this particular conversation yet. I mean, it's still going to be a long climb back to the top for the dubs, but if they keep riding this momentum they have right now, there's no doubt that Steph and his boys will be cooking the powerhouse teams in no time and be the dark horse in the West come playoff time.